scattering states are energy eigenstates that cannot be normalized. And uh, when you say this cannot be normalized, so what's the use of them? They don't represent particles. Well, it's like the e to the i p x over h bar, those infinite plane waves. Each one by itself cannot be normalized, but you can construct wave packets that are normalized. So the whole intuition that you get with uh, scattering states is based on the idea that we're going to construct energy eigenstates. This time, we cannot think of them as states of a particle. Bound states, yes, we can think of them. They're normalizable. But this energy eigenstates, unbounded scattering states, are not states of one particle. So we definitely have to go back and produce wave packets. But the intuition from those energy eigenstates is very valuable. So scattering states. So we call them sometimes scattering states because they look like the process of scattering. This will be uh, non-normalizable energy eigenstates. And you've played a little with some of them, and we'll now study one case in detail. We'll study a couple of cases between today and next lecture. So the step potential and the step potential is a potential that is 0 up to x equals 0. And here's the x-axis. And then suddenly there's a step at v naught. And here is the potential. So the potential wave, this is here, goes up. It's a step. And any energy eigenstate here has to be bigger. The energy has to be bigger than the lowest point of the potential. You know that you cannot have an energy but this like that less because this would have um, decay exponentially for infinite distance. It just all over it would have to decay exponentially. It's impossible. So all the energy states, eigenstates here, must have positive energy. So we have actually qualitatively two possibilities. The energy may be less than V0, might be greater than V0. It would look like you have to solve the problem two times. Happily, we'll solve one, it then let the other happen uh, by analytic continuation. So here is the energy. I'll take the energy greater than V0. But whatever is the energy, even if it's less than V0, the solution over here is going to be an exponential or a cosine and a sine a non-decaying function. And therefore, it can't be normalized, because it's non-decaying forever and ever. So it cannot be normalized. So how do we write the solution for the energy uh, eigenstate? It's a psi of x. Well, I should write two formulas, a formula for, a w for what's happening on the left side and a formula for what's happening on the right side. <laughs> Now, I have a choice, actually, here. There's two ways of visualizing this. I can visualize it as a wave that is coming from the left, moving here, or a wave that is coming from the right. So let's visualize this solution as a wave that's coming from the left. It will be a little easier. So I will write it. A e to the i k x. OK, why is it coming from the left? Uh, 
because if you put the energy that I will not put it is a stationary state, presumably this is a state with some fixed energy, it will have a factor e to the minus i, et over h bar. And when you see kx minus et, you know that that's a wave that is moving to the right. So this a e to the i k x is moving to the right. And then what will happen? Now, it's a matter of finding a solution of Schrodinger's equation. So you can try to find a solution of Schrodinger's equation, but you have to write some answers for what's happening on the right. I will write an answer here that will put c e to the i k bar x. Another k, well, we'll see now what those k's are. Um, I say the following. Here, the energy is bigger than the potential, so it has to be a wave. But here, the energy is still bigger than the potential, so it also must be a wave. But a wave with different kinetic energy, different momentum, therefore different de Broglie wavelength and different k. But we know from Schrodinger's equation what that should be. This wave is also moving to the right because probably if I have a wave moving to the right here, it produces some transmitted wave to the right. But then um, you could try solving the Schrodinger equation with this. It won't be enough because physically you would expect a wave bouncing back as well from here. So I will put a b e to the minus i k x. That's a wave moving towards the left with an unknown coefficient. And now let's get those constants. Um, I'll finish in two minutes. What is k? Well, if you have energy E, you know that the energy is h squared k squared over 2m. You can look at the Schrodinger equation uh, with zero potential over there. And therefore, k squared is also 2me over h squared. It's a combination you've been seeing quite a bit. The intuition for k bar should be that k bar squared is 2m times the kinetic energy, so it should be e minus v naught over h squared. So these are k and k bar. And the wave function must be continuous at x equals 0. That gives you a plus b equal to c. <laughs> At 0, all the exponentials vanish. And the derivative must be continuous at x equals 0. And the derivative being continuous is because there's no delta function anywhere here. So you have i k a, that's the derivative of the first term, minus i k b, the same k in that region, of course, is equal to i k bar c. So from this, you get a minus b is equal to k bar over k c. Two equations and two unknowns, and that's OK, even though there are three coefficients, because the way to think of this is that you're sending in some wave, and you're going to get some reflection and some transmission. So in some sense, A is the input. You could want to call it 1 or whatever. So what we're looking for is what is B over A and what is C over A. And these two equations, uh, it's a one-line computation. I'll write the answer. b over a 
is k minus k bar over k plus k bar. Do it for fun. And c over a is 2k over k plus k bar. B gives you a sense of how much is reflected. C, how much is transmitted. But this is the beginning, because this is not a particle coming in. So we'll have to build the packet and send it in and see how these relations tell you what's going to happen. So this is a nice story that we will develop next time.